Hey, welcome back. We're uh, this is going to be the second part. Just try to do two of these. Uh, continuing on uh, this book here, Why We Sleep: Unlocking the Power of Sleep and Dreams by Walker. Um, really interested here in the the helps. So we're in the. I'm going to take all the rest of it. Try to get it all here. So here, we're just grabbing pieces, and uh, hope you'll work on your health. You know, we 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 get our stuff checked out to us, our body and, and mind, our opportunities, and we want to serve the Lord Jesus, but a lot of times we don't treat our health right, we become convicted, we know we should do better, and then we don't really know how to proceed. So I'm giving you some business here from, from this uh, remarkable book that's been a great help to me. So again, kind of starting with the premise that uh, the book overstates the benefits of sleep by maybe dramatically, but even if it overstates those benefits quite dramatically, uh, still very much for us here. So here's, I'm just gonna grab some pieces here at, for the book. One other piece too, um, finally went ahead and set up this Amazon affiliate thing here. So if you're interested, you can buy the book. Uh, you can actually click on the link in my YouTube uh, notes for this uh, video, and I'll get a tiny, tiny percentage there. Uh, don't do it if it's if it's Friday night to Saturday night. Don't do it on the Sabbath hours. But if you're interested to help this channel and you think you might want to purchase this book, go for it. Uh, the link will be in the link there for you. Okay, here's one item here. This is part two. There's a whole part one video. Uh, one in 10 adults over the age of 65 now suffers, suffers from Alzheimer's disease. We talked a little bit about the, uh, that, we'll talk a little bit more about it here, but this has to do largely, we think, uh, in, in, there's a significant amount of sleep issues that go with it. Uh, and we don't want that, we don't want to have, uh, nobody wants to have Alzheimer's disease, okay? So, so we need more sleep. One out of 10 adults over the age of 65. Well, some of us are in that range now, we're getting up there uh, to where we're close to that. And uh, one out of 10, really? One out of 10, that's, that's remarkable. So how many people are struggling with sleep in that space? Well, a lot of people. So I want to read you two paragraphs here about this uh, way the brain cleanses itself and it does it during sleep. So uh, although the glymphatic system, the support team, is somewhat active during the day, Nettergaard and her team discovered that it is during sleep that this neural sanitization work kicks in in high gear. Associated with the pulsing rhythm of deep in REM sleep comes a 10 to 20 fold increase in a fluid expulsion from the brain and what can be described as a nighttime power cleanse. The purifying work of the glymphatic system is accomplished by cerebrospinal fluid that bathes the brain. Nettergaard made a second astonishing discovery which explains and why this cerebrospinal fluid is so effective in flushing out metabolic debris at night. And watch this. The glial cells of the brain were shrinking in size up to 60% during in REM sleep, enlarging the space around the neurons and allowing the cerebrospinal fluid to proficiently clean out the metabolic refuse left by the day's neural activity. So if you understand here, the brain, there's lots of fluid, lots of fluid in your brain, and there's a certain portion of the sleep. There's different kinds of sleep you have. And in one of those kinds of sleep, these cells in your brain actually shrink, maybe 50 or even 60%. And that allows this fluid to go through and give you kind of a big washout, wash out some of the bad stuff that's accumulating there. Like we talked about the amyloid plaques, beta amyloid. So that would help us be guarding against Alzheimer's. But if you're going to be up all night long, if you're going to be uh, getting three or four hours of sleep a night, no, you probably won't have this benefit. In fact, you'll probably be front in the front of the line for Alzheimer's or something. So let's get some sleep. All right, let's look at some more business here. Here's another quick item here. Sleeping less than six hours a night was associated with more than a three times greater risk of suffering a cardiovascular or coronary event, such as sudden cardiac death. This was relative to those sleeping seven to 7.9 hours a night. So if you sleep seven to eight hours a night, uh, you were much less likely, but if you slept six hours or less a night, you were much more likely to have a heart attack. Why? Because, you know, God designed us for sleep is one of the things we're designed to do. Yeah, let's go up here. I want to look at this and share this item with you. Here we go. Getting enough sleep will help you control body weight. A full night's sleep repairs the communication pathway between deep brain areas that unleash hedonic desires and higher order brain regions whose job it is to rein in those cravings. So getting enough sleep will help you control body weight. We talked about this just a little bit in the last video. Now I wanna uh, talk about sleep loss and testosterone. So I'm over here, you know, further on in the book, page 178. 
I'm following here. Take a group of lean, healthy, healthy young males in their mid-20s and limit them to five hours of sleep for one week, as a research group did at the University of Chicago. Sample the hormone levels circulating in the blood of these tired participants, and you will find a marked drop in testosterone relative to their own baseline levels of testosterone when fully rested. The size of the hormonal blunting effect is so large that it is if that if it effectively ages a man by 10 to 15 years in terms of testosterone virility. So we're looking at testosterone here and how it affects virility and how it affects bone loss. Uh, men who sleep, men who report sleeping too little or having poor quality sleep have a 29% lower sperm count than those obtaining a full night of restful sleep. Short sleep duration is significantly associated with smaller sized testicles. So <laughs> also more testosterone maintains bone density. So if you want to be a healthy, if you're male and you want to be a healthy person, uh, yeah, you want to be able to be virile. You want to be able to um, have good, serious bone density. Of course, this gets into overall the, uh, the business with uh, these hormo hormones and transgender this and transgender that. That's, a, uh, that's causing a lot of bone health issues for a lot of people. So yeah, sleeping is going to affect your testosterone count. Uh, so... Yeah, not too many guys want to be told, you know, hey, yeah, I'm, uh, or, or be that low on their testosterone scale. All right, let's go to another one here. So there's always the cancer thing. Now, you know, families, one family is more heart disease. One family has more genetically more cancer. I don't know which one you're in, but I wouldn't want to be in, in either one. How quickly and comprehensively a brief dose of short sleep can affect your cancer-fighting immune cells, says the book. Examining healthy young men is a careful study that... Uh, in a careful study controlled by spurious factors such as physical activity, Irwin demonstrated that a single night of four hours of sleep, just one night, such as going to bed at 3 a.m. and waking up at 7 a.m., swept away 70% of the natural killer cells circulating in the immune system relative to a full eight-hour night of sleep. So that's the T cells, you know, that the uh, immune, they seek out and destroy. So one night, one night of four hours of sleep uh, in their study, they saw that 70% of the T cells went away. I want my T cells, you know, on the job. Huh. So yeah, sleep, sleep is kind of a giant issue here. So it says here on page uh, 261 that any adult sleeping an average of 6.75 hours a night would be predicted to live only into their early 60s based on these studies. Well, a lot of us, this is going to apply to us. So uh, hopefully I won't drop over here during this, uh, this thing here. But anyway, I've make it, made some improvements in my sleep. Uh, this tells us also that your core body temperature, you want to get, get sleep, you want to get into a, your room to be cooler, uh, we, may open your window, uh, make sure that you don't have your room super toasty, it'll help you get to sleep. Uh, having your aunt, if it's very warm, like right now it's August here, uh, if you had your hands outside the sheets and all that, that will help you because your hands radiate heat, your head radiates heat very quickly. These things help you to uh, cool down. So uh, we want to sleep better, and those are some business, some things we want to have in order when we sleep. Uh, you know, I didn't bring it, but I've got one of those little mask things here. You know, you put on your eyes, you can get these little masks and they can keep out all the light. You want a dark room, that will help you sleep. Don't eat uh, late before night, before you're going to bed. Uh, don't eat, uh, try not to eat any time in the evening hours, uh, and that helps me sleep, some things that help me sleep. Uh, here's some more business. Uh, I wanted to just keep throw a couple of these quotes. 90% of individuals regularly use some sort of portable electronic device 60 minutes or less before bedtime. It's talking about how uh, it hurts your melatonin release. Um, so yeah, before bed, a lot of us do the, uh, the phone, looking at the phone, looking at the phone, looking at the phone. Guess what? You don't have to do that. Uh, look at this. Compared to reading a printed book, reading on an iPad, like this gadget, reading on an iPad suppressed melatonin release by 50% at night. So you know what I've been doing is, uh, not perfectly, not every night, but what I, I've had some good success. I try to limit before I go to bed the last... Uh, the last hour, I stop using any kind of screens, and then the last hours, I'm getting into bed and finishing off, I finish with the printed page. Not the printed page on a, on a screen, but the printed page on hard copy books. So I have some books that I read on my iPad, I have some books that I read hard copy. And before I go to bed, I go to that. And this one said, 
Uh, where did it go here? 50% compared to reading a printed book, reading on, on a screen like this, suppressed melatonin release by over 50% a night. Melatonin, of course, is what you want. Uh, you want it to be released at night. It helps you go to sleep. So it, it triggers things and gets you going for your sleep phase. So yeah, the last part of my day, I, uh, I'm very careful. These are some things, many of these things I picked up from the book, like this little item here. This might be a help to you. Uh, read from the printed page. You have perhaps a hard copy Bible or you have hard copy books you read. Uh, read those, read those. Even if you turn on your light, you've got a little light on your nightstand by your bed, uh, but you read off the printed page instead of a illuminated screen, that will help you, that will help you. So over here on page 299, uh, the frontal lobe, which is critical for self-control and reining in emotional impulses, is taken offline by a lack of sleep. So, right, we want our frontal lobe to be ruling. We want to be able to make rational decisions, you know, and have self-control. As Christian people especially, we'd want to have self-control. Lack of sleep, if you're doing this sleep, sleep mayhem, sleep basically attacking yourself via your sleep. It's kind of like, it's like smoking all night long when you don't, when you stay up. Uh, it's just a, a health disaster. Uh, if you take that course of action, you're reducing the ability that God has given you to have self-control. Uh, and so these are some things we want to, um, to be careful of. There's a section here on sleep deprivation and how governments, governments have a name for this. They inflict this on prisoners and it's a barbaric tool of assault psychologically and biologically, he says, measured on the basis of mortality impact over the long term. It, this is like starvation. It's like when the government puts you, when you have uh, different people who've gone into prison and the government puts them on a suicide watch and like every 15 or every 20 minutes they wake, up, wake them up, that is psychological warfare. That is like starving a person to death. It's like a long torture. Uh, when you keep people awake, and uh, the Soviets discovered this in the Cold War years, and Americans, you know, all the, everybody knows about it now. If you do sleep deprivation, if you deprive people of sleep, uh, I was reading here, I think somewhere here in the book here about the Soviets, how they would get people to sign confessions. Um, and not that they promised them a lot. They didn't promise them their freedom. They just promised them, well, I'll let you have a full night's sleep, but you've got a sign here. And they give, engineered a lot of confessions to crimes that never even existed uh, because people were so desperate after so many nights of being deprived of sleep. So this is a tragic thing. Our, the government shouldn't be doing it. It's evil. It's the voice of the dragon. Uh, we should not be doing anything like that. This little line, one-liner here, page 30309, REM sleep is what stands between rationality and insanity. So if you are feeling a little crazier, your spouse, partner, your child, your friend is, is acting crazy, I wonder if sleep is an issue. Maybe they're not getting the right amount of sleep. I really don't know if I know anybody who is getting the right amount of sleep. I hope I do. But uh, a lot of us are struggling with getting the right amount of sleep. And at the end here, there's uh, two, two or three pages on things that can help you get to sleep. I mentioned some of them, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna raid the author here. I'm not gonna. I think it's a good book. I think you should consider getting it. If you take seriously uh, the idea that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, then you will want to have good health uh, with sleep. So, uh, friends, I just wanted to share this again. Not exactly a regular book reaction or book review. Again, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't have the background in sleep science. Every, these books, they use analogies to, uh, to teach things, to try to get from study to, into, to, to a way of expressing it. Analogies are always imperfect vehicles and we've got to be careful of that. So I'm not saying that every single thing this book says pans out. I'm not saying, but what I am saying is that if, if, if a significant amount of the things in this book can be helpful to us in understanding and improving our sleeping, it can help us be better people because we get more self-control, we have the more work, the Holy Spirit works through the brain. You know, I'm coming to you as a very much a Christian channel here. And so although this book's all about science, it's not about Christianity, just to understand better, you know, the way sleep works, I want to understand it better. I want to be right. I want uh, to, uh, I want my friends and loved ones to have it right. And so I just wanted to pass this on to you as something I think could be um, potentially even, uh, you know, very dramatically life-changing to you. The difference between getting uh, five and a half hours of sleep every night and getting seven and a half or eight hours of sleep every night could be the difference between 
being vi victorious through Jesus and having self-control and, and getting through all the crises that come into our lives, it could be the difference between that and spiritual failure. It's a stewardship of our body. Sleep is very important. Um, I, I have not always done well in the sleep area. Perhaps you haven't either. I hope this is a, something you'll consider. And if it's not this book, fine. But find out, do some study, figure out what you can do to get your sleep in order. So you're getting seven and a half, eight hours. Uh, some people even need more than that sleep. So that you can be healthy, so that you can have a good experience with God and with people, so that you can be uh, put the full contribution in in the work that God gives you in your life. So anyway, I wanted to encourage you today and thank you for paying attention and letting me share a little bit with you about the importance of sleep. In this book, you might want to you might want to get into this book. It's up to you. Uh, again, why we sleep uh, by uh, by Walker here. Uh, so I'm going to just leave it there, and I hope this is something you'll consider. May you be in good health, the good health that is there when we follow the way that God has designed us to work. I think there's some insight in some of the material in this book. May you be blessed.